Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about spelling issues and spelling errors in your code base. So basically you have a PR and then the reviewer come back to you with some comments that there is a spelling issues. That's a little bit embarrassing and in this video we're going through some of the techniques that are used to prevent all the spelling issues in your code base and your project. So one is very specific to Visual Studio Code and the other one is very specific to ESLIM. So we're gonna go through both of them and we're gonna find out pros and cons with both. Okay, let's dive in and then find out what can we do. In my Visual Studio Code, you can see I'm using, for example, a TypeScript file and then there's a console log, there is a variables, and again, another console logs, and then we have some comments. So basically here, uh, you can see the spelling issues. So we have numbers, which should be, for example, with S, and the response should be SE. So we are gonna see these errors, and if you don't have, for example, facilities, you're gonna get these errors, you're gonna pass these errors, and you're not gonna notice it. And even maybe in your code base, you have errors, spelling issues for a long time that nobody even found out because they're very common and nobody really think about the spelling issues for whatever reason. So you can see if I hover on the code, it says response on known word, and then I can just quickly fix it with whatever. It just think, and then I can just, for example, use response or response, whatever I meant. So I can fix it response with SE. Now I have this one also fixed. So here I'm using code spell checker extensions. With this extension, it's going to find all the possible spelling issues in your code base. It doesn't matter what technology, what type of file or what language you're using, it's going to find them. The only issue with this one is you have to open the file and then you can see the issues. And then you are going to basically, for example, quick fix it or ignore it or add it to your, for example, project. By adding to the project means if, for example, you're using abbreviation or specific words in your code base that you can share it with everyone else, then by adding it to the user settings, it's gonna add it to the VS code file, which you can just put it into your uh, Git, and then everyone will have the benefit. So, but if you don't wanna add it, you can just add it to the user settings. User settings will be specific for you. Workspace settings, it would be for, uh, you can share it with others as well if you add it to your Git or control version. So I'm gonna just, for example, fix this one as well. So this is fixed, but as you can see on the left side, it was just thinking about the English language. But if you wanna consider other languages, you have Brazilian, German, Portuguese, French, Russian, and a lot of other languages, as you can see on the left side. So it depends on the language that your code base and your comments are written, then you can just uh, customize this extension. This extension could just save a lot of times in a code review and for you when you're going to write code. As I said, there is an issue with this one. The issue is that you have to open files and if you have a big project, you're not gonna do that and if you're going to do it, you might miss some files and that will be a lot of pains. In order to fix this one, we are going to talk about ESLint plugin. So with one of the ESLint plugin, which is the spell checker, it's going to find all the issues in your JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, JavaScript and TypeScript code base that you have. It can look into other files as well, like MD or JSON files and others, but because it's ESLint, so as long as you have ESLint in your project, then you can just look for the spelling issues as well. So let's add ESLint checker, well, ESLint plugin for code check or spelling check in the code base and then see how can we leverage that one in our code base as well. Okay, if you go to the npmjs and look for eslint plugin spell check which i'm going to just copy this one and uh, we're going to install it and then add it to our project so all i have to do is to just add it with an npm or pnpm i'm going to just do pnpm add dash d and then eslint plugin spell check so it's going to add it so now if i go to my package.json as you can see i have the spell check here as well Remember something, if you're going to use this technique, you must install ESLint in your project. And I have a video that explains all of these things in detail. So I'm gonna just put the link in the comment section and also here on the top, so you can go and install ESLint if you not have it in your project. So now that we have this one, what we have to do is to go to file, we have ESLint RC. In ESLint so RC, we're gonna add plugins. The plugin is a spell check, the one we just installed, 
and then we're gonna have some rules as well so with the rules and if you follow the website it's gonna give you some sort of rules as well so we just copy and paste that one I'm gonna go through some of them and explain what do they mean what do I mean by them and then you can see them in the practice as well so we have comment we have so it's looking into the comment for spelling issues it's going to look into strings identifiers templates string templates and then the language which could be for example american english british english and other like uh, english versions and then we have skip words which is an array that going to just ignore these words if there is an issue it doesn't care it just passed them and then we have skip if match we're going to use regular expression skip words if match now if you just do very quickly so i'm going to just save this one and now if i go to my index.ts you can literally see there is issue here so eslint found those issues and it's going to say for example you have misspelled the word num2 identify something something and then also here it doesn't care there is problem here uh, let me actually change the spelling here and then i'm going to also update some of these words awesome. And also I'm gonna add some console logs here. So I'm gonna just remove them basically. You can see, for example, I have one version which is British English, the other one is American English. And because we are using ENGB, it's going to find out those ones as the issue and uh, others as well. So now, because we have ESLint, because we have ESLint installed, if I do pnpm run lint, and if you go to my package.json, you can see when we are running lint command, it's going to run just the eslint. So nothing very fancy here. But all I want to do now, I'm gonna just make, do this one, press enter. There we go. Now we have some issues. The issues are as follows. So in eslint RC, we have some warnings. The reason that it shows warning because we said and we asked to just show warning, it could be error. It could be off it could be anything so we're going to choose warning or one and then we actually talk about all of these things and it's just looking for some errors so it's basically it doesn't like es21 on our identifier it doesn't like ts config it doesn't like the word plugins so what we can do we can just ideally add them here so for example we can say plugin is fine so i'm going to just quickly add it there the next time that i run it it will not show any errors or warning basically uh, for the word plugins and then to just prove the point i'm going to run it one more time going up now it doesn't really care about the plugins word and then also if you go to the spelling sorry index.ts it's going to show a lot of errors because we are using eslint it's very easy to just ignore the line as you know if you hovered on these lines so we have quick fix the quick fix is actually coming from both places we have spell checker extensions which it just shows some recommendation or you can say just skip this line or skip the entire file so if i skip this line i'm going to add the rules on top and eslint disable next line so it's not going to throw errors but still we see the blue one which is coming from the spell checker extensions which we can still fix it if you want but probably the best thing to do is to just completely fix it and we're not going to get any issue and here there is no issues but because we are using engb it doesn't like it now i need if i change it to uh, us save it actually i'll open them side by side now you can see it doesn't like the British English version so it doesn't like this one so if I change it back again you can see it live there was it there we go here and uh, now it's gonna take this one as error so depends what you want to use you can just change them and just play along so the language doesn't matter that much uh, but it's there to use it and if I go here and if you just look at the language so you can see you have in US CA for Canada and also you have AU and GB and you can use it globally as well if you want so basically now we before even we commit something or before even we just do anything we can see by running our ESLint we can get all of those errors and we can just 
add the linting to the git hooks and then even before you commit something it will just pick all those errors as well and if you just really want to show errors then you can have this one as well so now it will be red because there are errors or if not you can just stick with the warning one so now you have learned two techniques one with ESLint so you must have ESLint to just benefit from this it's going to go through all the code base and it's going to fix well it's going to identify all the issues the other one is Visual Studio Code extension which it doesn't care about any plugins like ESLint all you have to do install the extensions and it's going to find the issues the problem with for example extension is that you have to open files one by one you cannot stop there you cannot just stop the IDE or stop the commit or you cannot identify them you need to go manually fix them one by one with the ESLint plugin it can pick all of them and then you can just identify it in a whole code base if you have a big code base this is one to go and very specifically ESLint because you're using JavaScript and TypeScript that would be very good with the other one it doesn't care about technologies so it's up to you probably it's best to have both of them so you can see them in both places and have the benefit of just the both variant so thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it please don't forget to share subscribe and like the video and i'm going to just put more content thank you and i'll see you in the next video